I want to do I want to do something different. Today we're calling it Vision Sunday, and through the through the the month of February, we're going to be communicating our vision, our vision as a house. I'm going to have different pastors and leaders come up here on various Sundays and speak about you know their involvement in their portion because what what we do with vision as a house is very very different. We we take vision very seriously and it goes through a a process it it goes through a process of of steps that we meet about pray about talk about but here's what i want you to know about vision is the way the vision works is god speaks to the leader and then the leader speaks to the leaders and then we speak to the people god leader leaders to the people so that people will also have a vision and an understanding of not only where are we going but who are we not only where are we going but who are we and I want you to understand from the Word of God that our God is a visionary leader everybody that God speaks to he speaks to them through vision whether it's through dreams Uh, whether it's through other forms, God reveals himself. Really, that's what vision is about. It's a revelation of the will and the desire of God. And and the Lord has personal vision for you. But really, today and in the weeks to come, not not that I want you to avoid personal vision, but I want you to understand that I really want to put an emphasis on corporate vision. Who are we as a local church? Who are we as a ministry Who are we as a body? Where have we been? Where are we going? And what is the Lord saying to us at this time? Those of you that, you know, are you part of our congregation, but you're very far away and and you watch us online and you wonder, you know, who are these people really? What are they really about? Well, I want to share that with you this morning. And I want to bring the principles of, of the word of God out because we all know the scripture out of Proverbs 29 that without vision, the people the people perish. So the alternative to vision is you get to perish. And nobody wants to perish. We, we see a society around us that have lost vision, particularly for the good things, and, and because of it, they are perishing. As a matter of fact, the, the verse goes on to say that without vision, people cast off restraints. And then they get into all sorts of things, calling it you know, liberty, I'm, I'm free. This is what our world's all about today. I'm free, I'm free. No one can tell me what to do. I, I can make my own decisions. What they don't recognize is that the enemy has tricked them. It's actually not freedom, it's actually bondage. And then they look at people like you and I, and they say to us, oh, you're so restricted. You're, you're so in bondage. But in reality, our God sets us free. <laughs> Come on, somebody, our God sets us free. And so I want to just share some some thoughts about who we are, where we are going, and the fact that we have vision. And part of what I did to prepare for this Sunday in particular is, I don't know about you, but the prophetic words that God speaks to me over the years, I've I've kept them all, whether it's in, in writing, in audio, in digital, some of them, my friends, honestly, on cassette tape. I don't go far as far back as 8-track, but I do go far back as... Anybody remember the cassette tape? Do you know that the cassette tape is making a comeback? You know, I'm telling you, don't get rid of your cassette tapes because they're making, I go all the way back. I have cassette tapes of prophecies that were given to me. And, and when I was installed as the pastor, when I was installed, prophetess Nancy Clark, who is going to be with us again very shortly, she had a word for me. And in, in part of the prophecy, the Lord said this to me. He said, my son, what is it that I see in your hand? Is it a chalk or is it an eraser? It took me a while to understand what the Lord was saying to me. And then in the very same prophecy, he said to me, although you are a man of skill, I don't want you to lead this company, this church by, by skill. I want you to lead them by vision. And then in other places of other prophecies, I began to read how I would receive the vision in the secret place. That's where you see what God is doing. That's what you hear 
what the Lord is saying. This is what I've tried to do since 2005 is, is literally to lead us by vision. What does that mean by, by what is the Lord saying? By what is the Lord you know, showing us and, and where is the Lord taking us? And, and here's what I came to understand a little while later of that prophecy, that what the Lord was saying to me was, you know, just because you're becoming the leader, don't, don't just take that eraser and wipe everything out. Wipe out the past and, and wipe out the heritage and the DNA and somehow, you know, write your own name, if you will, all over the vision. But the reality is not only was God speaking a vision to me, but how many understand that the house itself has a vision? The house has a, a destiny that God wants, wants it to have and desires to have. And the best thing you can do is have a house and a leader that have the exact same vision so you don't have... You don't have competition. You're not pulling against the DNA. You're actually pulling together and you're moving towards the things of God. And so I want to encourage you this morning, not, not only to have personal vision, but to understand that, that we are here called together as a family to have corporate vision. And I, I would pray that as you're listening to me today, you know, you would ask the question, how do I connect with this vision? How, how are my giftings and callings a part of what God is doing here on, on the corner of Finchgate and Queen Street so that we can advance the kingdom of God for his glory? How many of you give God praise for that? And so I want to say this. I want to say this. Because when we talk about vision, we many times talk about the future and People live in such a way where they're always chasing. Oh, and in the by and by, and coming, it's coming, it's in the future, it's in the future. But, but you know, the Lord gave me a thought that not only are we walking towards the future, the future is actually coming towards you. The future is coming at you. The, the reality is that the vision that sometimes people live by, like, oh, you know, somewhere down there, some, no, 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 in, in every life, of the Bible that we read about, their vision was coming at them the moment that God began to communicate with them. You say, well, pastor, how, how, how did the Lord communicate? And I'm coming to the word in just a moment, but I, let me take you back. Let, let me take you back to the life of Abraham who was in his little tent. And God said, come out, come out of your tent, Abraham. Come out, come out. Eventually they would call him Father Abraham and, and God painted a picture in the sky of stars and talked about descendants and nations. And, and today, my friends, listen, every Christian, every Jewish person, every Muslim will tell you that Abraham is their father. God painted a picture. What about Moses? Moses who thought, you know, life was over. I'm just going to live in the backside of the desert. I'm, I'm 80 years old now. And I was once the prince of Egypt. And now I'm just a shepherd. And, and all of a sudden, God appeared. And by the way, when we say God appeared to him, you know who was in that fire, right? You know that it was Jesus that was in that fire that spoke to him out of the burning bush and gave him vision. I could take you to the life of Joseph who had a dream of greatness and how, and how he would save the nation and save his own family. I, I could bring you into the New Testament and speak about Paul, which we will in a moment. We could speak about even the Lord Jesus who lived his life by, by vision. We could go to the life of Peter on the, on the shore after the resurrection and how, how the Lord Jesus gave him new vision for the rest of his life. How he said to all the apostles, you know, most of you are fishermen. Jesus said this, I'm now going to make you the fisher of men, of mankind and, and salvation. And so... With that in mind, I want us to go to the Word of God. I want us to go into the Old Testament, which, by the way, is the, you know, is the Bible. We're going to follow the Bible, so will, will you stand with me? I want you to look at Exodus, three places. Exodus 24. Everybody with me so far? Everybody say vision. Exodus 24 and verse 1 says this. This is God speaking to Moses. He says, come up to the Lord, you Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel, and worship from afar off. And then in, 20, in, in verse 4, he says, And Moses wrote, catch that, Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and he rose up early in the morning, and he built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And then in verse 7, it says this, Then he took the book of the covenant, and he read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said, we will do it and be obedient. In Ephesians 1.18, Paul wrote this. 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And then towards the end of his life, when Paul was on trial, remember he had appealed to Caesar, he was going to Rome, but he, he says in the midst of his trial, therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I was not disobedient to what I saw, to what was revealed to me from heaven. You remember Paul was a terrorist. He was a murderer. He would have loved to lock people like you and I up and split our families apart. And then all of a sudden, Jesus appears to him on the road to Damascus and blinds him. Throws him off his high horse, knocks him down, blinds him for three days. And then when Paul received his sight because Ananias came, he had new vision. And now at the end of his life, he's saying, King Agrippa, I have lived my life according to the vision that God gave me. Father, we thank you today. You're the God of vision. The God that gives us sight and understanding. The God that gives us revelation and illumination so that we will not walk in darkness, that we will not stumble around wondering, where are we? Where are we going? Who are we? That we will not be people that cast off restraint and fall for every wicked thing. But you have called us. You have opened our eyes and caused us to see. And we're humbled. And we bless you and we love you today. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. To turn to somebody with you, you know, that's with you there, a couple of people beside you. Just greet them, bless them. Right now, will you do that? High five them. Speak vision into them. Glory to God. We bless you online wherever you are. Let me tell you a little bit about, a little bit about vision. You've heard me say this before that, that by quantity, the miracle and healing that Jesus did the most was to give vision to the blind. Physical vision and spiritual vision is incredibly important throughout the entire Bible, that God, God wanted people to see particularly his will. What, what is vision really? It's God's guidance. It's, it's his will. It's his direction. And really in the, you know, in the um, fivefold ministry, one of the, the greatest ministry that provides the direction of the Lord is the prophetic ministry. The, the prophetic people, if you will, that office, they are the seers. They, they say, this is the direction of the Lord. This is what the Lord is saying. This is where the Lord wants you to go. And it's important that we have vision. It's important that we know what vision is, that, that it's directional. It's the will of God. It's who we are. But watch this. Vision creates momentum in your life. Somebody once said, if you have no vision, any road will take you there. But see, vision creates momentum, but it also creates priorities. It also, sometimes it creates a narrowing of the path because you're not going to go certain places or you're not even going to connect to certain people because you have a vision for your life. And really the only people that you want to journey with are the people that are heading in the same direction. How many understand what I'm saying? And so, I want to remind us of what we've been talking about. We're talking about vision since December 31st, that we are to be fruitful, that we are to multiply, that we are to go around and, and go about doing good. Whatever God has called us to do, we are, we're, go, we're going to do good. And I've just, I've had so many testimonies and messages of, and please keep them coming. They're so encouraging of people uh, saying, Pastor, this is what's going on in my life, and this is what's happening. And, and, he, and even, in my, even in my own life, even in my own life, I, I was able to do a, a, a podcast with a former student of mine who's uh, from St. Kitts, from the island of St. Kitts, and he had some, some different pastors on, and he's, he does this leadership podcast, and he put me on there, and uh, apparently this thing has gone out throughout the entire Caribbean, and so I, I thank God that here I am and freeze in Brampton, but somehow the word of the Lord's all going all over the Caribbean, amen? Come on, somebody. <laughs> or then this week, an apostolic leader called me and said, and said, you know, Pastor, I've, I've been asked to uh, speak in Oregon. I've been asked to speak in Michigan and different places. And, and they want me to speak on, on leadership. And you're the leadership guy. And he said to me, would you be willing to send me some stuff on leadership? 
I said, absolutely. He said, is, you know, is it okay that, you know, that I, you know, I tell them where the intellectual property is from? And, and I said, absolutely. He said, well, I want you to know, he said, your, your, your leadership stuff is going to multiply. Even though you don't go there physically, your, your thoughts and your ideas are multiplying. How many people give God praise for that? So I want you to know we are, we are multipliers, and I, I want you to, and we're going to keep that word. That word is our, that word is our word throughout the year that, that we are enlarging, that we are expanding, and I love even what Pastor Rick said to us when he came in September for our anniversary, speaking of the children of Israel, he said that the more that they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. The more they were afflicted, the more the Egyptians and the taskmasters gave them, gave them a difficult time. The Bible says the more they multiplied. And my friends, you ought to get up in the, in the morning and tell the devil, the more you afflict me, the more I'm going to multiply. The more you aggravate me, the more I'm going to multiply. Huh? He thinks he's going to destroy you. He doesn't even know. He's doing God's bidding and he's multiplying it unknowingly, praise God. So here's the first thing I want you to know about vision. Are we doing Okay. I want to give you the structure of vision. I want to give you the structure. I want to give you the building blocks today. Because, you know, years ago, we created something called a purpose statement. A purpose statement really boils down the entire ministry into, into a sentence. And here it is. Years ago, when we prayed and asked God, really, APC comes down to three things. Number one, loving God. Number two, strengthening family. Number three, developing leaders. Number one, everything, everything starts... Because we love God. Jesus said, if, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. We love God. We love Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And everything we do, everything we decide, every action is not because we are made to do it. It's because we love the Father. I love what, I love what Jesus said to Peter on, on, that, on that shore. He said, Peter, if you love me, you're going to feed my lambs. Not if you love the lambs. Not if you love the flock. He said, if you love me, do you know why I serve you? Not, not so much because, so much you know, I, I love you, although I do love you, but I serve you because I love the Lord. Hello? And that's why sometimes when you bite me, because the sheep bite. Oh, nobody here, pastor. Nobody here. <laughs> but even when the sheep bite, you're loved. Why? Because I love the Lord and because I serve the Lord. And so... We start with loving God, but then it's about strengthening family. Notice, not families, but family. What do I mean? It could be the nuclear family. It could be the, it could be the ministry, the idea of the, the band of brothers, the, the concept of brotherhood and, and being a family together, that we are the family of God. We, we want to strengthen family and families, and then ultimately, we want to develop leaders. In other words, we want you to fulfill your call. Your potential. Genesis. Where God has given you dominion. That's why when people say to me, well, pastor, I'm not a leader. But Genesis 1 says you are. That the Lord created you after his own image and he gave you dominion. Though you will rule over the world that God has given you. Even if you're leading yourself. And then people say to me, well, pastor, are leaders born or are they made? You ever thought about that? Are leaders born or are they made? You know what the answer is? Yes. Yes. I'll take you to a playground. You know, on a, let, let, you know if you go, to, you go to a school on a Monday morning, I'll take you to a playground, I'll take you to school, and you will find there that there are children with leadership gifts. They didn't, they didn't go to a seminar. They didn't go to a course. It's... It's in them. It's innate in them. They are leaders. Other children follow them for various reasons. But it's not always those children that grow up and ultimately become the leaders. Because some of those followers that are maybe following in the, pray, in the playground, somewhere they develop their leadership, gift, and ability. And so it's not always those with the raw natural talents and abilities that lead. But honestly, somewhere, even if you're not born a leader, you can develop the gift. It's never too late. It's never too late. So yes, they're born. But then they're developed. They're forged. They... They come into this. They come into their gifting and their calling of God. But, but I want you to notice, church, 
Everybody, literally almost 100% of the people that had an encounter with God or with Jesus in the Bible, they all resisted. Very few said, yes, sir, you know, I'll report tomorrow. No, Jonah had to become fish food. Hmm? A rebellious prophet, evangelist, can you imagine? A rebellious prophet that, that by the way, he didn't resist God because he knew he was going to fail. He resisted God because he knew he would succeed. God said, go to Nineveh and preach repentance. And you know, at the end of the story, what Jonah says to the Lord is why, and they repent. He has 100%. He saves the people, say, and he's upset. He said, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you this was going to happen? I was going to come here. I was going to preach repentance. They were going to repent, and you're merciful. Nobody dies, and I'm not happy. Jonah! He says, you know, the Lord says, I'm going to have you swallowed up by a whale. And you know, people come along, they say, well, you know, the Bible's not real, and it's ridiculous. And now you know what they found out? Now they found out there are whales that literally can, sw uh, can, can swallow humans whole. Don't tell me the Bible's not real. <laughs> and so the Lord says, you're going to stay in that belly until you come to your senses. And we know that Moses, Moses argued with God. Well, I can't speak. I've got to stutter. I, Jeremiah said, you know, I'm too young. Hmm? Everybody murmuring, complaining about something. Joshua, who 40 years earlier was all like, let's go, let's go. And then, and then 40 years later, the Lord's got to tell him, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Jo I'm with you, Joshua. Be strong and courageous. So listen, if you are, if you are in trepidation about vision and maybe you're not sure because God said something to you and it, and it absolutely terrifies you, I want you to know you're in good company, praise God. You're, you're, you're in good company with the rebellious and the cowards and, and everybody else. God doesn't really look for the, the gifted per se as much as he looks for the willing. Are you willing to be obedient? And so I want to show you our, our working model our working model, and I'm going to take you to the three components, is really this. I've, I've always seen a house, by the way, an apostolic house. An apostolic house that runs by spirit, being Holy Spirit and systems. In other words, our desire is always to be spirit-led. What does the spirit say? How is the spirit leading us? What, what does the spirit want us to do? I'll take you to the book of Acts, I hope, if I have time. And, and you'll find that the early church, really, they lived by the leading of the Holy Spirit. The presence of God, the presence of the Lord. In other words, the Lord has the, the preeminence. As much as we uh, do rehearsals and we, we prepare and we have, you know, we have, we have, uh, you know, we have uh, planning meetings and all the rest of it, I, I always say to everybody, subject to change without notice. In other words, we do our best, but God's in charge. Sometimes, you know, let me give you an example. If the Lord falls in a particular song and, and we sing that song over or a line, because why? We are an apostolic house. We're a prophetic house. We're, we're, we're not looking for the ritualistic things. We're looking for life. We're looking for where, the, where God is moving. Somebody give God praise. And I appreciate that we're very agile in this. We're very agile. But you know, when you're online and when you're, you're trying to create something that, that is a little more production-oriented. It can be difficult because we, we sometimes put our, our people in tough spots. And, and, and so this is why skill and systems are incredibly important. This is why I appreciate so much, you know, about Corey. Because Corey's got, he's got that angle on me over there. He's always watching me. There's a, a couple of Sundays back, you know, when I was just leaving down here. And, I, and there was a song. I, I caught it. I caught it by the Spirit. And I was going down there, and, and I said, you know, team, I said, this is the song that we should end the service on. Oh, you know, pastor, oh, we haven't practiced. It's so hard, but, 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 but I appreciate Corey, because Corey has a philosophy that whatever pastor wants, pastor gets. Huh? And I had come into the second service, and I'm, I'm giving him the eye. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm creating a message to him. And he's like, because he had already done it. He made it. He made it happen, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God just broke out. Because we want to be agile. We, listen, it's not even so much about, about making pastor happy. I just want to make the Holy Ghost happy. 
So spirit and systems. I appreciate evangelist had come into my office and he said, Pastor, my, my wife told me to come and volunteer at the food hub. Thank you, Sister Susie. Appreciate that. God bless you wives when you send your husbands to ministry. Amen. Not to the grocery store, to ministry. And she said to him, you know, you ought to go volunteer at that food hub. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Off he goes. And, and he came and he came into my office and he said, Pastor, the, the system. And I, I've got a video. I've got a video of that. going to rock you today. Right at the end, we've got a video I'm going to show you. But he said, the systems and the excellence of the way that you're feeding these people is phenomenal. Why? Because we are spirit-led, but it's systems that support the move of the spirit. So, come on, somebody. Come on. I, I, I've been to places, Pastor Ranji, you know what I'm talking about. The spirit is moving, but it's chaos. It's chaotic. It's like out of control nonsense. And I'm like, I, I, you know, it's like people climbing walls, babies everywhere. I'm like, what is going on here? The Holy Spirit is not the author of chaos. He's the author of order. 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 Somebody say order. Come on. Huh? I'll be honest with you. I can't even pray in some rooms. If they are chaotic and cluttered, you know, my wife will tell you, man, when I get home, if I, I get stressed out, if, if there's, you know, if there's a, a lot of clutter with my, my grandson, my nickname in Italian for my grandson is Terrimoto. That's not Japanese. I know it sounds Japanese. Terrimoto. No. It literally means earthquake. And he is an earthquake. I mean, he is everywhere. When he leaves, the house is like, you know, I'm like, get this house. I love him. And I let him do whatever he wants, if you will. But, but it's like, get this house in order. The Richter scale has been tipped. <laughs> Everybody say order. order. Okay, three components. Three components. So that's the working model. Three components of the vision. I'm going to get to the rocks, and then we'll be done. Number one is the worship experience. Here, what, what we do here, gathering around the table of the Lord, gathering as the family of God, and and my friends, how many times I've heard, well, you know, pastor, we, we, we can just worship anywhere. We could worship at the coffee shop. Yeah, but you know what the Lord has said? And even people that wrote in the New Testament, he said, do not forsake the assembly together. Because we all bring a part of God. You see, Jesus had God without measure, but you and I, we have a measure of God. Can I say it this way? I don't know how this all works, but when you come to the house of God, you bring your measure. And I bring my measure. Jay, you bring your measure. And, 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 and we, we unify our anointings and our callings and our gifting. And we worship Father together, corporately. The corporate worship experience where God begins to flow and, and, and move. And, and then on the other side, here's the other component that I saw, is the broadcasting component. Whether it's on social media, I believe, I believe with all my heart, that we are connected somehow and that we are to be on television. I said some things in the 9 a.m. that I won't exactly give the details, but let me tell you about how the future comes at you. Just before COVID hit there, I was invited to go to Calgary, not Calvary, but to Calgary, <laughs> to preach at the World Pentecostal Conference and do, a, and do a talk there, actually on social media and whatever, and I did, and and a lady that was there from a, a well-known Christian uh, network, TV, TV channel, I guess, program, TV network, thank you. She said, Pastor, I heard you and I want to speak to you. And so we met. And then she said to me, you know what, I want to come to your church. I'm going to be in the Toronto area. And, and she did. And we met October 17, 2019. And we talked about TV and then COVID hit and kind of lost touch and all of a sudden, this week, I get a phone call from this lady, pastor, left a message. Do you remember me? The minute I heard her voice, something in my spirit just moved. Something shifted. I called her back. She says, I'm living in Texas now. She goes, you remember me? I said, I remember you. She said, do you remember me? I said, absolutely, I remember you. And, and all of a sudden, we began to talk about television. What do you think, pastor? I said, I've always, always believed that this was part of my DNA, part of the DNA of the house. And, and so, my friends, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Not only are you moving towards the future, the future is moving towards you. And then I had a sense of the Lord saying to me, what are you going to do about this call? What are you going to do? And so, 
here's what we do. I bring it to the elders and the pastors, and I'm, I'm bringing it to you now, and I, and I say, pray. I want you to pray. Please pray with me, because I don't want to do anything without the Lord. I don't want to do anything without the timing of the Lord, but, but let, me, let me give you a, an understanding of how God works. I remember being at Shoppers Drug Mart years and years ago. 401 in Victoria Park, they built a $2 million studio in the basement. Every Monday morning, I, I would do a program called Headline News, broadcasting to 30,000 people from BC all the way to St. John. I was the face. Other than the CEO, I was the face of the company. And I remember one day, I stopped. I was leaving the studio, and I stopped. And all of a sudden, it was like God gave me a glimpse, and I knew this is part of my future. I'm connected to this. Somehow, somehow this is part. And all of a sudden, it was like the curtains closed. See, I was moving towards the future, but the reality is that the future is moving towards me. So, so we have this broadcasting responsibility. On, on uh, which would be my left, is what I call development and education. This is really falls under the developing of leaders, but not only do we preach the word, we're here to develop you. We are here to train you, which, which by the way, church, is the apostolic model. What is that? Gather, train, release. That's the Jesus model. Gather, train, release. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to throw you out of the church. You understand what I'm saying? But, but, but that you're released in, into, the, into the destiny and the sphere to go and have dominion in that part of the world that God has set you. That, that's why we're here. And by the way, it's not just to be ministers. If you're in the, if you're in the business realm, I've done uh, at the school, you know, we, we've, we've done um, workshops on how to become a politician and run for public office and, and, and wherever it is. And this is why, you know, I even appreciate about Corey, how, how Corey has a, a, a school of music and wherever it is, wherever it is, my friends, we are here to develop you, to train you and to release you into your your dominion. So that you will bring about the kingdom of God. I, I just met with Pastor Ranjeev this, uh, just this, was it this past week? We met, we talked about training and development. We mentioned it yesterday at the policies meeting where Pastor Ranjeev is, is and we're going to have a problem. I know we're going to have a problem. This is always our problem is space. Space is always our problem. People are already excited because uh, Pastor Ranjeev years ago had, had done this uh, course called uh, Life Management 101, and we're going we're gonna to launch that. We'll have information for you next week. We're going to launch it in March, and so there's limited seating, and so you need to, you need to sign up. In May, we're going to do something called the Beta Satan, and then uh, further down, uh, down the year, this is all part of our Crawford Academy, I'm going to do something called Financial Intelligence so that you will multiply and be fruitful even in the resources that God has given you. So this is our heart. This is our heart as a house to develop you, to train you, worship, broadcasting, and then development. So let me give you the rocks really quickly. And I want to show you a video because I'm going to build on these rocks. What are rocks? Rocks are the big things that we carry uh, in the ministry, normally on a yearly basis, but sometimes they'll go over one year over another, but really what they're meant to be is the main goals and objectives. This is where we gather, and, and I'm going to have Pastor Ranjeev share with you uh, maybe next week on how we actually strategize vision, because how many understand it's not just about vision. Vision requires strategy, hmm? so that you don't just become dreamers. It becomes a reality to your dreams. So here's our, here's our first rock. Our first little rock is church life. It's our, it's our community health. How healthy are we as a community, our culture, our core values? You know, I was so blessed this morning. You know, the pastors and the elders, myself, we get together for prayer every communion Sunday. And you know, uh, Brother Robert, who's in, in part of our, uh, where is Brother Robert? Wave at me, bro. Tremendous prayer warrior. He, he was bringing me a report of the intercessors. And, and the intercessors go out into the spirit realm. I call them like the, you know, they're the SEAL team 
of the body of Christ. They, they're like covert. Nobody ever knows about them. They wear these silly little, I don't know if they wear silly outfits or not, but you, you know what I'm talking about, those seal members there. They, they go out, nobody knows they're there, but they're out in the spirit realm and they are, they are, they are getting a sense. You know what he said to me? Because he, he's in different meetings. He's in elders meeting, board meetings. And he said to me, pastor, it is phenomenal what these people pray and they're in none of these meetings. You know why? Because they're picking it up by the spirit of God. I love it when, when I, you know, I speak a word and people come up to me and go, Pastor, the Lord spoke to me this week or today about that. Why? Because they're picking it up in the spirit. So number one, number one is our church life or our community health or our culture and how we, um, how we assimilate people, how we function, how we connect. Number two, number two is our spiritual health, your spiritual health. See, it's not, church, listen, it's not enough that you're coming to church. I don't want to be going attendance, good, check off that box, check, no, 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 I want you to be abiding, I want you to be in the secret place, I want you to be growing in Christ, I want you to grow in APC, but I would rather you grow in Christ first, Amen. you become a healthy member of APC because you're in the secret place, you're, 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 you're abiding, you're growing, you're developing, number three is brand and reach, this is why we have our our logos and our merch and all the, the time and money we spend in hiring people on, on, on social media and various things. Because why? Because we are communicating a message about Christ through the ministry. Pastor Alicia was, uh, was just on vacation. She got in very late last night. Somebody said to me, if Corey's around, he can somebody said to me in the meeting, in our prayer meeting, well, you know, Pastor Alicia got home at midnight or something, and so she might, she might not be here. And I said, listen, you're on vacation. You come to the house of God. <laughs> and so I barely said that, and boom, she comes in. But listen, listen, talk about brand and reach and invitation culture and salvation. She goes on a cruise with members of, of work, friends. But she said, I got this message, not even from her, but apparently we needed to pray because not only was Pastor Alicia on, on vacation, but she was on assignment. Guess what the assignment was? That in the midst of the buffets and everything else that occurred, the people that she had gone to work with, they gave their life to Jesus. Why don't you pray that? Say, God, if you send me on a cruise, I'll get people saved. Hallelujah. I won't be like that fathead Jonah. I, 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 I'll get, I'll preach to the whole ship. Praise God. Just get me up. Reaching people for Jesus. Making a difference. Expanding the kingdom. Developing lives, building leaders. I, I forgot to mention, I, when we talk about building leaders, this is why we, we hire these summer students. I love summer. I love hiring the, the summer students. I think Candace put in for seven, seven or eight this year. And then we, we have a co-op student that is starting in just a couple of weeks. And uh, young Mackenzie came up to me and said, Pastor, for school, they, they want us to do co-op. Can, can I do my co-op at the church? Isn't that cool? Can I, listen, listen, can I tell you something? You're going to learn more at APC than you're going to learn at McDonald's. I just want you to know that. I mean, we have video, audio, we put them on announcements, we build confidence, we have, we have coaching, we have leadership. I mean, it is phenomenal what the people that work with us, the experience they get. And by the way, you can put on any resume. Pastor Ranjeev and I are working on even certifications and, and even, you know, the life management. Uh, Pastor Ranjeev is a certified trainer. Can I say trainer, director? What is the, a certified trainer in Agile? We have brilliant people. You know, Emily has a master's. Candice is a trained lawyer. Uh, we got Pastor uh, Jason and, and Pastor Moses that have bachelor's in theologies. You have the, the valedictorian. Of, of the entire school. People here that I hire you, my God, after every class, there's a lineup. 
give me a job, give me a job, give me a job. You know what I say to them? Become the valedictorian and come talk to me. Because I, I, I got to get the best at APC, bless God, because, because my people deserve the best. They deserve talented people. I don't know if you know, Corey is one of the most brilliant, brilliant music directors, I could say in GTA, but really beyond GTA. Is he not in the country? In the country. In the country. Why am I saying this, church? And sometimes, you know, we, we take things for granted. Someone was speaking to Pastor Ranjeev and saying, I could tell by your streaming of where you, you put the money and you put the finances. And every dollar, we challenge every dollar. Can, can you tell? This is how you know we challenge every dollar. It took 43 years to change the chandeliers in this place. <laughs> 43 years. And finally, I just said, Lord, I think it's enough. I need some light. And the Lord said, let there be light. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Isn't God good? And so why do I say this? Can, can I just say this? I'm going to close. I don't want to come to church and come to a church that I'm not happy with. I, I, I don't want to come to a place where I'm like, oh my God, it's Sunday. I don't like it there. I don't want to be. No, no. I, I want to rejoice, but I want you to rejoice. And I, and I, I want you to have a, an atmosphere where you're like, I want to invite people. I want to be a part of what's going on. I, I see the vision. Maybe you're disgruntled. Maybe you're upset. Maybe, I don't know what it is. Get, get your stuff together because we don't have time. We don't have time to get caught up in little petty things and petty issues and petty problems. Huh? You want to talk? Let's talk. Let's resolve our issues. Let's get over it and let's serve God. Are we okay with that? Here's the last thing I want us to do. Just before the worship team comes up, Emily and Pastor Jason have put together this video from the Food Hub about who we are. This is who we are. This is what we do. This, this is the heart of Christ. That, By the way, we've been doing this since COVID started. And it's not diminishing. The requirement is getting greater. And so I want you to watch this video. And then the worship team will come. And then I bless you and I release you with the presence of the Lord. Can we roll that video? In 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, we saw a need. Our community needed help. They needed a space where anyone could be provided with free groceries. So we created our APC Food Hub, and since then, it has grown and grown. 2022 was an incredible year for Food Hub. Throughout the year, our 75 volunteers served around 621 people every Tuesday for 51 weeks, come rain, snow, or wind. For the whole year, we served over 30,000 people, almost 8,000 families in total, with 111,419 meals distributed in total for the year. That equals around 221,176 pounds of groceries. The value of our groceries for the year was $856,000. And all of this food was donated by our partners. APC did not purchase a single piece of food for 2022. Some of our generous partners included Sobeys, Regeneration, Knight's Table, Cobb's Bread Bakery, No Frills, and Peel Community Collaborative. This year, we were able to have five main events for Food Hub. Our Easter Hope Project, our Bedding Outreach Initiative, our Backpack Giveaway, Thanksgiving Chicken Giveaway, and our Christmas Dinner and Toy Drive. For Easter 2022, we raised $11,000 in online donations to purchase a cube van. So far, we've been using these funds to rent a van to transport the food in 2022. Our Bedding Outreach Initiative was partnered with City Serve Canada. This program allowed for our APC families to be given a bedding set and an evangelism package to give to friends, family, and coworkers to show the love of Christ. Four giant skids of bedding were given out. 
Our backpack giveaway in August allowed us to give away 90 backpacks full of school supplies thanks to Regeneration and certain families at APC donating specifically towards this project. For Thanksgiving, we were able to give away 180 chickens so our community families could have a special Thanksgiving dinner. And lastly, for Christmas this year, we had a toy drive giveaway from the Toronto Star Santa Claus Fund. We were able to give away 84 gift boxes from them, as well as 12 bags of toys, hats, and gloves from Knight's Table to serve 222 children. Peter's Food Truck was also able to serve hot food that night to all 222 kids that came, plus their families and our APC volunteers. We were also able to raise $1,625 to purchase 15 cases of whole chickens to provide our Food Hub families with a special Christmas dinner. Food Hub couldn't exist without the help and generosity of our partners, sponsors, and our beautiful APC family. Thank you for your continued support of this vision of Food Hub and for making such a difference in our community's lives. Sharing the love of God with them is the calling. So here we come, 2023. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate your time. Will you please like and subscribe so that you will get notifications? And by the way, your comments and your feedback are very important to us. Even sermon series and messages that you would like to hear about please let us know, drop us a line. We would love to incorporate that into our teaching and our preaching. We appreciate you and thank you.